A late winter surprise snow blanketed the Puget Sound region early this morning, but that didn't deter the Husky faithful from lining up early and getting rewarded with a visit from head coach Lorenzo Romar. And some good eats from new head football coach Steve Sarkeesian. It's a Pac-10 heavyweight showdown in Seattle tonight. The Pac-10's highest scoring player, the Pac-10's highest scoring team, the slimmest of margins in the standings. Tonight, the battle for first place takes center stage in Seattle. Washington hasn't won a Pac-10 title since 1985. Arizona State has never claimed even a share of the conference crown. It's a Sun Devil team riding a shooting star. It's a Husky squad looking to make Seattle sports shine again. It's ASU and Washington right now on FSN. Husky fans are fired up for a matchup between two of the top teams in the nation. It's the 21st rated Washington Huskies against the 14th rated Arizona State Sun Devils. And the standings in the Pac-10 Conference tell the story. Washington with a one half game lead over Arizona State with Cal, UCLA and Arizona still hoping to have something to say about the conference standings. Great to have you with us, everybody. I'm Tom Glasgow. Welcome to Bank of America Arena on the campus of the University of Washington. Whether you're watching on FSN Northwest, FSN Arizona, or across the country on the FSN Regional Network, it's terrific to have you with us tonight to see this matchup between two outstanding teams loaded with tremendously talented players and topping the list, the likely Pac-10 Player of the Year, Arizona State Guard, James Harden. For more on Mr. Harden, we send it to my partner in a sea of purple known as the Dog Pack, Francis Williams. Francis. Thanks, Tommy. Well, as you said, James Harden, one of the nation's best Naismith Award finalists, one of only seven players in the country who's averaging over 20 points per game but shooting over 50% from the field. ASU's 9-1 and one when he gets more than five assists, and he can impact the game in a lot of ways. Not the only talented guard, though, Francis. Let's talk about that starting Husky backcourt, Isaiah Thomas and Justin Depp. Well, Isaiah, and Just, Isaiah Thomas, Justin Dentman, Isaiah Thomas, the leading candidate for freshman of the year in the Pac-10, and Justin Dentman, who's having a great senior season. These guys are one and two in scoring for the Huskies. Last time they met ASU, combined for 55 points. Dentman shoots over 46% from behind the three-point line. ASU will have their work cut out trying to slow these two guys down. This game also involves two of the best big men in the nation in Washington's John Brockman and ASU's Jeff Pendergraft. John Brockman, the career active leader in double-doubles with 55 and counting. Last time they played, a quiet 10 points and 9 rebounds. Jeff Pendergraft, 21 points and 15 rebounds for ASU the last time. Great matchup down low between these two seniors. Yeah, those guys love to get after each other. It's a clash of Pac-10 Titans and a clash of styles. The Huskies want to run it, run some more, while the Sun Devils want to slow that tempo down. The opening tip is on the way from Seattle on FSN. Welcome back to Seattle for what will certainly be an emotional game on a critical night for both of these programs as they seek Pac-10 in history and a conference championship this year. Right now, let's bring in the third a member of our broadcast crew, Jen Mueller. Jen? Well, Tom, earlier this week, Huskies head coach Lorenzo Romar compared the importance of this game to one the Dogs played back in 2006 against UConn in the NCAA tournament. And talking to him minutes ago, he said he didn't lose any extra sleep over this one because he doesn't sleep 
much during the season anyway. As far as Arizona State head coach Irv Sendek, he is a focused coach and one that knows how to get his team prepared. His assistant actually complimented him on that today. The Sun Devils in preparation for tonight's game did a 45-minute walkthrough and an hour and a half shoot around, which they said is no different than any other night. But Tom and Francis, I think we can all agree it's much different and much bigger for both teams tonight. Jim, thank you. We are underway. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Volkswagen for the Washington Huskies. And we will get to that momentarily. ASU with the first possession in this contest. Jamel McMillan to the man to watch tonight. Number 13, James Harden, who goes to the rack, gets the hoop, and he'll head to the line. Well, you see right away, University of Washington always goes with a, a, a bigger person guarding Harden. Gant is about 6'8". Did a pretty good job on him last time, but as you can see, Harden right away is going to be much more aggressive than he was last time. Last time they met, he only took nine shots. Harden, Derek Glasser, Jamel McMillan, really three guards, and then Rehards Kuksix and Jeff Pendergraf up front for Arizona State. And for the Washington Huskies, Isaiah Thomas, Justin Denman, John Brockman, Quincy Pondexter, and Darnell Gamp. The missed free throw and the early 2-0 lead for the Sun Devils. And talk about what they like to do, Francis, when it comes to defense. Well, they play the matchup amoeba-type zone and really try to pack it in and force you to shoot from the outside. The last time it didn't work very well as Justin Dittman went crazy for 30 and Isaiah Thomas had 25. But uh, they'll live with it. That's what their defense is built on and that's what they'll do the entire night. Second chance opportunity for the Sun Devils. Long shot. Kook six, one of the best three point shooters in the nation. But he misfires in Washington to try to get its first bucket in this ball game. Justin Denman with the ball, really a comeback season, a resurrection of his collegiate career for Washington. An outside candidate for Pac-10 Player of the Year. Number two, Isaiah Thomas, the front runner, really, for Conference Freshman of the Year. Shot clock at 10. Open look for Thomas. Drains the three. And that's a big shot for Thomas. He's only shooting 29% from behind the three-point line. So for him to knock down that first three be big for his confidence. And Thomas with a D on Derek Glass, really one of the under-publicized players in this conference. Francis, but a very effective player in the backcourt for Arizona State. Yeah, Coach, uh, Coach in the pregame talk that we had said that as Glasser goes, so goes Arizona State. Open look for Harden, short. Pendergraft, though, with the offensive rebound. Two early offensive boards in this contest for Arizona State. Lorenzo Romar does not want to see much of that tonight. Well, Washington has that plus nine rebounding margin against their opponents. And there's the best rebounder in the Pac-10. John Brockman averages 11.3 boards per contest. Seventh best in the nation. Nice feed inside. Rejected inside, but a foul on James Harden. And, we, and Isaiah Thomas, freshman for the University of Washington, having a great freshman year, really impacting this, this Husky basketball team. Struggling a little bit from behind the, on, the line, but for him to be able to catch that ball in rhythm and get a good look at the basket, knocking down that early three, uh, it's good for his confidence and good for the Huskies. John Brockman has really improved as a free throw shooter this season, hitting nearly 62% of his shots. In the first matchup with Arizona State, an off game, if you will, for John with 10 points and nine rebounds. Double doubles are really his standard operating procedure. Yeah, there's two guys in the Pac-10 that give John some trouble. That's Taj Gibson and, and Jeff Pendergraf because of their length. Penetration by Glasser. Harden with an open look, passes up the shot, and then decides to take it in and out and rebound Brockman. And Isaiah Thomas with the push. We talked about pace and tempo. Washington wants to get it up and down. Offensive rebound, Brockman. Wide open look, Denman again. Inside Pondexter battling, and McMillan comes away with it for ASU. And that's what Washington likes to do. They're going to pound you on the glass. One of the best rebounding teams in the country. Seems very obvious very early, Francis. Harden wants to do as much as he can to get into that paint and create. Pendergraf with the fade over Brockman. And the Pendergraf and Brockman matchup, we talked about that in the open. I think that'll be 
critical critical aspect of this game. But Harden, I think tonight you're going to see him look to score a little bit more early to try to set his teammates up for things as the game gets a little deeper. Thomas with the three ball, Pendergraft with the rebound, Washington with a 5-4 lead as we approach four minutes played in this opening half from Bank of America Arena. Glasser, nice find to McMillan. And the foul on Pondexter. First foul on Pondexter. Well, we talked in the open about these two seniors have been doing battle against each other now for four years. And John Brockman does a good job defensively to force to force Pendergraft into a tough shot. But he's strong enough and has enough balance to finish the play and knock down a little eight footer. Early substitution for the Huskies as Justin Denman goes out. Vinoy Overton comes in. Also checking in for Washington, Justin Holiday as Darnell Gant takes a seat. And Vinoy Overton placed into the lineup here pretty early in the game. Typically comes in and really affects the game defensively for Washington. Glasser for three, misfiring. And the rebound for Quincy Pondexter, who over the last six games has really come on. Not only offensively, but defensively. Total package play. Well, really had a big game for the Huskies against USC on Saturday when he had 22 points, the only Husky that was in double figures. You see the hustle of John Brockman. And an over and back violation against Arizona State created by the Brockman effort. Yeah, great effort by John Brockman, but a little nonchalant by James Harden going after the loose ball. Two heavyweights feeling each other out early in Seattle. It's the Dogs with a 5 4 lead. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena, Washington, with the early 5 4 lead over Arizona State. Time now for our Les Schwab League leaders. Oh, and it's strength versus strength, Francis. ASU's defense and Washington's offense. Well, Washington averaging 79.4. They lead the Pac-10, 14th in the nation. And ASU, as always, one of the better defensive teams in the nation, second in the Pac-10 with the points allowed. So contrast and styles here for sure. Benoit Overton, number one with the ball. Skip pass over to Overton from Isaiah Thomas. The Huskies look to build on the one-point advantage. Nice find. But unable to finish due to the foul, number 22, Justin Holiday. But terrific vision by Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas with the penetration here. You see him get into the lane, which he's very good at getting into the lane. He finds Gant coming along the baseline there. And as long as uh, the Husky guards are able to penetrate that zone, it's going to make life real easy for the rest of the guys as long as they're moving and getting to open spots. Foul on Kuczyk is first. Is did he call glass? Hey, either way I guess it doesn't matter. Shoots nearly 53 percent at the line. Yes, and excuse me, that's Holiday that he found along the baseline there, not Gant. And Holiday, the last time these two teams met, did a great job of defending James Harden, who you see you be matching up with now, and came off the bench and had 10 rebounds for the Huskies in that game. 7-4, Washington up. And Benoit over to very quick, very aggressive defender working against Glasser. But nice rotation of the ball by Arizona State. Kuksix with the find to Pendergraft. And that's an area where Arizona State, I feel, has a distinct advantage with Pendergraft down low. He's, he's longer and he's a lot more athletic than John Brockman. He always gives him trouble, and you just see him doing a good job of, of shielding Brockman away from being able to get to that pass and going up strong and playing through the foul. Jamel McMillan checking out for Arizona State. Checking in number three is Ty Abbott as Pendergraft heads to the line where he shoots 77 percent. And completes the three point play. Pendergraft at nearly 67 percent the top shooter in terms of field goal percentage in the nation. In the nation having a great year. We are tied at seven. Day trying to get it into the post to Pondexter, guarded by Kuczyk. Harden coming over to help. Creative bounce pass by Thomas to John Brockman, who had very good position down low. And John with the steal. And then Huskies coming your way in transition. Overton to reverse the follow by Pondexter. Great job by Thomas on the. First possession to again get into the lane and be able to find a cutter going to the basket. 
John Brockman running the floor does a great job of intercepting that pass as Pendergraft was actually running the floor and doing a good job also. When Washington can get out in transition like that, that's what they do. They miss the layup, but there's Pondexter to clean up the mess with the offensive board. And Washington up 11 to 7. McMillan returns and Glasser heads to the Arizona State University bench. Ty Abbott, number three, guarded by Thomas. Brockman with the overplay. And we'll see if the foul goes against Brockman, and it does for John Brockman. His second personal foul, and that's an early concern for Lorenzo Romar. Yeah. Well, John Brockman always runs the floor in both directions, and he gets back and is able to get that steal that creates the transition opportunity. But on that last possession there, Pendergraft being active, doing a good job of making Brockman work, and now that's two fouls on John Brockman early. Now saying that's just one foul on Brockman, an earlier foul that we thought went against John apparently did not. The turnover for Washington, Pondexter inside. Another turnover by Arizona State leads to a transition basket for Washington. And a six-point advantage for the Huskies. Washington on a 6 nothing run. Harden double team swiped by Overton. He draws the foul from McMillan, Vinoy Overton to the line. Well, Overton always comes into the game for Washington, brings a lot of energy, typically on the defensive end. You see him sneak up on Harden and get that steal. He goes to the basket against his old AAU nemesis, Jamil McMillan, as both of these guys from the Seattle area know each other very well. McMillan, the son of current Trailblazers head coach, Nate McMillan, played his high school ball at O'Day in Seattle. And Ray Overton shoots nearly 76% at the line. A young man who is a freshman started the majority of the games. His role changing this year with the arrival of Thomas, and he's making the most of being one of the top six men in the conference. Yeah, he started 26 games last year, and once he accepted the role of being the sixth man and coming off the bench, it was a huge turnaround for the Washington team. Huskies on an 8-0 run, covering 56 seconds as McMillan penetrates, and he draws the foul. A lot of pressure being applied by Overton, but a good job of staying under control by McMillan. He sees an opening there and takes the ball strong all the way to the basket to draw the foul. Right now, let's check in again with Jim Mueller. Tom, I had a chance to talk to Jamel before the game, and I said, you know, what does your dad tell you most? It's not going to surprise you. Nate tells him, stay aggressive and get to the hole. I'd say he's following dad's advice, but Jamel also has some advice for Nate. Nate, if you're watching, he says, make sure that game tomorrow night, Blazers and uh, Minnesota, keep it on the defensive end, dad. <laughs> Good advice from the youngster. Bill Blazers in Minneapolis. Of course, uh, Nate may be watching that game with a guy who's pulling for the dogs as Pondexter takes care of business inside, and that, of course, would be his star player, Brandon Roy. Oh, absolutely. Both of those guys have a vested interest in this game. I'm sure they're both watching, but right now, Washington is just putting on a clinic of attacking this zone and getting into the seams and doing a good job of posting up both Brockman and Pondexter. 30-second timeout taken by ASU head coach Herb Sendek. You look at Holiday going inside to Pondexter. And you know the thing with Quincy Pondexter, Francis, is with those numbers that he's accumulated over the previous six games is the confidence. I'm not sure which came first, the confidence and the results or the results and the confidence, but it came together for him at the perfect time for this Washington program. Well, when he kind of retooled his game and decided that he was going to leave the three-point shot alone, he was going to do what he had to do to try to get to the basket, continue to be a good defender, get out in transition, get on the offensive glass, it's kind of come together for him. In these last six games, he's been lights out, 17.7 points a game, big game against USC on Saturday, 22 points. And tonight in this game, Richard Kuksix, who's a devastating outside shooter, fourth best three-point shooter in the country for Arizona State. They need him to make buckets. We know that Brockman and Thomas and Dittman are going to get theirs. Quincy Pondexter gives the Huskies that fourth score that sometimes make them almost impossible to beat. ASU will maintain possession on the kick. Five different Huskies have already scored with Pondexter leading the way with six points, and he is just a three points away from 1,000 for his career. Washington with a 17 to 8 lead. Ball coming into Harden. Nice face, face by Kuczyk, 
He misfires, and Matthew Bryan Aminick checking in and coming up with the ball. Justin Denman has returned for the Huskies, number five. Rockman taking a seat on the UW bench. Washington looking for the first double-digit lead in this contest. Nice position by Amining. Matthew Bryan Amining getting it down, and Washington up by 11, 19 to 8, 12 40 left in the first half. And Washington is doing a great job of getting reversing the basketball and just getting an isolation down on the block and just going one on one, and they have too much size down low for Arizona State to be able to match up with them. Brian Amining, and that's going to be a charge or a travel, a travel on Jeff Pendergraft. Nice job by Matthew Brian Amining, holding his position defensively against one of the best low post players in the country in Pendergraft. Yes, well, you see Washington on the offensive end. They just reversed the basketball, and now it's just a one on one down on the low block, and Brian Amining just drops steps to the baseline, and he's got an easy layup. That was the fifth turnover against Arizona State. Washington with none so far in the contest. You look at the turnover situation. Something Herb Sendek certainly is concerned about. Matthew Brian Amining getting it done at both ends of the court in his first few minutes off the bench as James Harden has an answer. 21-10 Washington. And he's more than capable of getting his own shot whenever he wants to, and he might have to do a little more of that tonight because the Huskies defense right now is just honed in on everyone. This ball inside contact. Offensive foul called against Overton. Matthew Brian Amining getting it done in place of John Brockman as Brockman takes a seat. Matthew Brian Amining says don't worry about it coach. But out the other end James Harden shows he knows how to finish. The Washington Huskies with a double digit lead 21 10 over the Arizona State Sun Devils here at Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Good to have you with us on FSN Northwest Arizona and across the country on the FSN Regional Network. You see what's on the line. It's a mammoth game in the Pac-10 Conference. The Huskies with a win tonight would take a huge step towards sealing the deal. ASU, I think from their perspective, feeling like this is a must-win game. One half game behind the Huskies. And oh, by the way, tonight in Pullman, the Washington State Cougars knock off the University of Arizona. Back-to-back -back wins for Tony Bennett's team over UCLA. And the Wildcats, all of a sudden, they become a very scary team. Yeah, they, they could be peaking at the right time. Jaron Ship with the ball, checking in for Herb Sendek. I have it had a little bit of an opening in the corner. Lasser, Pendergraf, shot clock at six. And Pendergraf going to work using that strength and athletic ability. And a little more patient that time to see if the double team was going to come. And when it didn't, then he went to work. Huskies have made their last six shots after connecting on just one of their first seven. Number 31, Elston Turner now into the ball game for Washington. Nine point Husky lead. Dentman blocked by Abbott. Shot clock at five. And Dentman had to force it up. Shot clock violation did not draw iron. Good, de good defensive sequence that time for Arizona State. Maybe they can get this thing a little bit more to their liking and a little bit more under control as the Huskies had run out on them early. Overton, Matthew, Brian, Amining back to the Husky bench as Brockman and Thomas return. 21-12 Washington. 10-25 left in the first half here in Seattle. Quick hands by Denman. Comes up with a loose ball, finds Brockman, and Glasser steals it back for Arizona State. It's a tough break for Washington, but a good job by Glasser to hustle and get involved in the play and be able to pick up the loose ball. Pendergrass. A strong contact. And it looks like it'll go against James Harden. 
James Harden, a sophomore. This is this is probably it for him. There won't be a junior season at Arizona State. He has the uh, NBA drooling over his potential. A likely pick as high as number two in the draft by some accounts. Yes. Either way, he's looking at the lottery for sure. Without question, but uh, after last year being overlooked by the committee, uh, I know one thing he wants to do is lead his team to the tournament. Brockman and one and the nice vision by Elston Turner. You can see the Arizona State defense is concerned with the perimeter play of Washington because of what happened last time with Dentman and Thomas going for 55. They're trying to do a better job of guarding the three point line which is opening it up inside for Brockman and Gant and Pondexter and Brian Ameny. Six points for John Brockman. Two for two at the line tonight. And when he's going good at the line, that's bad news for the opposition. Washington has done a lot of damage against its opponents this season at that charity stripe. And the Huskies have now doubled up Arizona State at 24-12 inside of 10 minutes in this opening half. Hendergraff got it done inside against Matthew Bryan Ameny. Let's see what Brockman can do. And with three Huskies around him, they needed a fourth. Pendergraft getting it done. Well, that was a good job by Coop 60 to go hard to the basket and be able to find Pendergraft. Open look for Elston Turner. Good outside shooter. Rebound by Ty Abbott for Arizona State. Shake and bake. Ball last touched by the Huskies. It'll be Arizona State ball. James Harden, a young man who very unselfish with his teammates, maybe too unselfish sometimes. Underground doesn't get the bounce. Quincy Pondexter with the rebound for Washington up 10. And the five for Thomas. Couldn't quite get it back to that right hand and put it in. In transition, Glasser for Arizona State. Nice body control. Yeah, good job by Glasser. What Arizona State needs to have happened the last time they played, Abbott, Glasser, McMillan was six for 29. And it simply came down to Pendergraph was really the only offensive threat they had, along with Harden sporadically getting some of his 15 points. But if Glasser, Abbott, McMillan, and Kutzik can get some shots to fall, then Arizona State's going to have a chance to crawl back into this thing. Abbott from downtown, no good rebound, Brockman. And last year, dub possession, Thomas, who likes to get in and draw contact and get to the line, drew the contact. The officials didn't believe it was enough, though, to earn him a trip for two. Yeah, a little bit out of control, so I don't think they were going to bail him out with the foul call. Then the misfiring. Harden keeps it alive. Does not have numbers. He'll wait for his teammates to join him in a foul by Denton reaching in. Arizona State trying to put a little run of its own it together, trailing a Washington as Derek Glasser hangs and hits, but the dogs are still up by eight. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena. The 21st rated Washington Huskies with a 24-16 lead over the 14th rated Arizona State Sun Devils. So far it has been a streaky Washington team on offense hitting just one of their first seven shots then making six in a row and then misfiring again one out of seven. Let's take a look at our Jack in the Box outside the box. Pendergraft. Streaky, yes, but streaky in that he has been nothing but successful so far. Yeah, we're well, basically picking up where he left off the last time these two teams played. But uh, it, as long as he's patient when he gets the ball in there on the post, wouldn't be a bad idea for maybe him to kick it back out and relocate. But if he's able to be patient and understand where the double team is going to come or if it's going to come, he has a size advantage in there. And when he takes his time and goes to work, he can be effective. Well, the first meeting, Francis, between these teams uh, back on January 31st, won by Washington, 84 to 71. Pendergraf hitting 10 of 13 shots. Five of those were dunks. A sixth was a lay-in. He did serious damage in the paint against the Huskies. 
He has nine of Arizona State's 16 points as Harden hits the free throw as Arizona State is now in the bonus. Washington with 17 fouls. And there you see the story from that last meeting. Washington really had it going offensively, hitting 52% of its shots. ASU are very cool, especially when they're at home, 41%. Team fouls, by the way, for Arizona State, five. So Washington getting closer to a bonus situation that ASU is already in with the Sun Devils right now on a 10-3 run and within six points at 24-18. McMillan guarding Overton. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Glasser guarding Thomas who elevates. Ball kept alive and a foul inside. And it goes against Han Dexter. Quincy Pondexter, yes, his second personal foul and free throws coming again for Arizona State. Well, that 10-3 ASU run, which has uh, kind of settled this game down for them, and right now the tempo is definitely at the pace that they want the game to be played. Tough luck for Thomas in that three rattled in and out, but as always, Huskies crashing the boards, and uh, that time the foul was called on Pondexter, so ASU has a chance to cut into this lead, get the clock stopped, and get into the foul line. Pendergraf earns the second. 6'9", 240 senior out of Etiwanda High School in Etiwanda, California. Averages 13.8 per game and 8.2 rebounds per contest. That's fourth best in the Pac-10. Arizona State down by just four now. So Washington tries to refine, reclaim some rhythm on the offensive end that they had and lost, and that's one way to get it back, go inside to your main man, John Brockman. Yeah, that's a tough shot along the baseline there that Brockman knocked down, but I think you see Arizona State defensively being a lot more active defensively. You see their hands, and they're doing a better job of just making it tough for the Huskies to even have passing lanes to move the ball. Earlier, I thought they were a little passive. Blacks are doing a nice job using Pendergraft to get the open look, unable to connect. Brockman baseline over Pendergraft. Harden with the rebound for Arizona State. We talked about all the things he can do. Rebound, score, distribute, come up with the steals. Cook six, open look, and drains it. And that's what they need right there. He has the ability to give guys looks. All the supporting players have to do is make shots. 47% of three-point range. Cook six, fourth best in the nation. Overton. Brockman inside the putback. You're going to see the Husky guards all night try to get penetration, and you have to keep Washington off the glass. That's one of the things where they what they do with one of the best teams in the nation. They are constantly on the offensive board. Huskies up by five, and once again, Glass from Pendergraft in a two-man game. McMillan had an open three from the corner, passed it up. Kusick will not. The rebound by Pine Dexter. Maybe a little hip heat check that time by Kutzix. Well, Harden, tough play for James Harden. Looked like he'd come up with a steal, got smacked in the face, had the presence of mind to throw the ball back in play, but apparently when he did that, stepped on the sideline. And I'm sure Arizona State would like to have seen a foul called on that play. There's the smack in the face by Thomas. Those two guys, by the way, good friends. There's the hit. And you see Harden step out, but the composure to try to get the ball back into a teammate. Yeah, and I think it was just some inadvertent contact there when Thomas hit him in the face. But, uh, you know, again, you, you got to hustle and, and not take anything for granted. When the ball is loose, you got to be active and going after it. And Harden will take a seat. Oh, Six bleeding. points, four rebounds. So we'll have to get that taken care of. John Brockman has scored the last seven points for the Huskies who lead by five, 28-23 with 5.25 left in the first half. Overton inside the overplay by Pendergraft. Good defense by the Sun Devils and they come up with a turnover. Moving their feet, having active hands. 
Glasser again, but this time he gets picked from behind. Looked like Overton got a hand in there, and then Glasser going over and committing the foul on Pondexter. Sixth team foul against Arizona State. First personal foul on Glasser. There's some pretty physical play down underneath as he seems to really mixing it up. But that's about the third time that an Arizona State players has been a little nonchalant with the basketball, not understanding that these, these Husky players are going to always be swarming, coming after you. You always have to protect the basketball and, and know that there's going to be people coming. Elston Turner, number 31. Thomas found a little room. The runner off glass, no good. Brockman's tip, no good. Kuchik's with the rebound for the Sun Devils. Good ball moving by Arizona State as Abbott goes in. Offensive foul on Abbott as he collides with Brockman. No basket for Arizona State. John Brockman sacrificing the body. And Ty Abbott. Ty Abbott's a good outside shooter, but he's really struggled with his outside shot this year. So he turns down the three and goes to the basket, and it's just that lack of confidence because he hasn't been able to knock those shots down. He decides to go to the basket, and he still has no good fortune as he does a good job of finishing the play, but bang, bang, and they call it a charge. Brockman will take a break as Matthew Bryan Amening returns for the Huskies. Washington at 28-23. Hesitation by Thomas and a penetration. The creativeness, one reason why he's the likely winner of Pac-10 Freshman of the Year. And he has a great knack of just being able to find those seams and those little cracks. And he's so strong and crafty with that left hand and has a great ability to understand how to use the glance. Lasser was lurk looking back at his coach, Herb Sendek, trying to figure out what he wanted him to run on this possession for the Sun Devils. And going to James Harden is not a bad option. And being able to get him the ball in the middle of the floor where he can kind of survey the whole court and see what's going on. And he can either take the ball to the basket strong, pull up and take the little jumper, or, or as he's done earlier, get a shot for a teammate. And Arizona State again taking advantage of a Washington turnover with the Sun Devils down 5 30 to 25. Justin Denman getting ready to check back in. Now ASU turns it over. And here comes Pondexter. Active hands at that time by Washington, as they've been doing all night. Just get a, get a deflection, create a loose ball situation, pick it up, being able to get out in transition. Eight points for Quincy Pondexter on four or five shooting. And Washington with a seven point lead, 32 25. Nice backdoor cut by Harden. Nice find by his teammate in high school, Derek Glasser. Yes, Glasser and Harden on that play were definitely on the same page. Out of Artesia High School in Los Angeles, foul against Arizona State, and that will have a Husky at the line. We can feel the momentum, the energy starting to build with these teams with so much on the line tonight. First place in the Pac-10 as Quincy Pondexter continues his run of hot play. Oh, but don't forget the main man, the likely winner of the Pac-10 Player of the Year Award. Washington with the five point lead over the Arizona State Sun Devils 32 27 in this battle for supremacy in the Pac-10 conference here at Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Washington, 
Washington Huskies hoping to hold court here on this Thursday night for both of these teams a really a quick turnaround with their Saturday games Washington will go at noon against Arizona while Arizona State will be in Pullman for a two o'clock contest against Washington State Isaiah Thomas and speaking of the Cougars Clay Thompson of Washington State the leading contenders for Pac-10 freshman of the year Clay Thompson tonight in that upset of Arizona 16 points for the Cougars at four of seven from three point range. Who's your pick Francis. Well right now I'd have to go with Isaiah Thomas although I think Clay Thompson is a is a close second but there's been a uh, you know there's a nice group of freshmen in the league again not like the group we had last yeah. year but uh, DeMar DeRozan Drew Holiday down at UCLA I've really enjoyed watching Jorge Gutierrez play for Cal I think he's had an outstanding yeah. year for them and then Michael Dunnigan at uh, at Oregon has had a pretty good freshman year too. the big guy in the middle for the Ducks Gutierrez maybe the best defender as a freshman at least on the perimeter oh I, I think so I think he's uh, Coach Montgomery has given him minutes that he's earned and he got those minutes by doing his job on the defensive end first Thomas after hitting both of those free throws with seven points in Washington with a seven point lead Darnell Gant with the defense on James Harden. Janelle McMillan with the penetration. Ball tipped. Gant comes up with it and here comes Thomas quickly the other way. Hangs. Tip. Brian Ammoning no good. Kooksitz battles for the rebound for Arizona State. Look ahead to Pendergraf and the lay in good. Nice find in transition by McMillan. Pendergraf does a great job of running the floor. Brian Ammoning a little late getting back, but that's you see John Brockman will be checking in because Brian Ammoning did not run the floor and allowed Pendergraf to get that layup. Pendergraf with a game high 13 points. Sun Devils down by five. Thomas with a hesitation to turn. And a difficult shot doesn't get the bounce. Gant inside, fouled from behind by Pendergraft. And that's the one problem that ASU will have with Washington throughout the game is being able to to rebound out of the zone. Washington rebounds so well and they're so aggressive at going at going to the glass. You end up being on the weak side over there, and there's Harden trying to do battle with Gant at six eight, Brian Ammoning at six nine, and he's six five, and he's not going to win that battle too many times. Pac-10 basketball returns this Saturday as the Washington Huskies take on Chase Budinger and the Wildcats of Arizona. And then it's off to Pullman where Taylor Rochester and the Cougars battle Arizona State. Doubleheader action tips off at 11:30 a.m. Pacific here on FSN. Washington hitting 10 of 11 including those Gantt free throws Arizona State 6 of 8 and the Huskies with a 6 point lead 35 29 1 of 40 left here in the opening half of Bank of America hard sizes up the three ball over Gantt and drains it. Oh yeah he's dangerous anytime he has a ball in the hand he hit the ball in his hands he can make something good happen. 13 for James Harden had 15 total in the first matchup between right. these clubs. Been a lot more aggressive than uh, Gant made a comment in the paper about the first time maybe Harden didn't want to acknowledge uh, the good defense that was being played on him. Rockman over Pender drop and rebound by Ty Abbott. And an opportunity with a three ball or three point play for Arizona State to tie the game. As Harden once again attempts to go to work on Gant. Kuksis operating. On the baseline has his pass deflected out of bounds with 22 seconds on the shot clock 102 on the game clock. Harden wants the ball in his hands. He wants it in his hands. He wants to make things happen because he can carry this team. And it's that time of year where the, the cream rises to the top and he's going to have to lead this team because he's the guy. Forest, good defense by Gant, but look at Harden get the offensive rebound and go back to work, and he'll head to the line. A young man who had Washington as one of his final choices for a college, and obviously settled on the Sun Devils. Yeah, he did. Well, followed his high school teammate, followed his coach to, to ASU, and uh, Coach Sindek. I mean, what can you say? You're talking about a guy that has eight of his protégés that are head coaches now so he obviously knows what he's doing but you see in that last possession he gets the offensive rebound he's not concerned about passing it back out or doing anything with it he's going to keep it in his hands and he's going to make something happen three for four at the line tonight for James Harden who shoots 75 percent on the season 
mentioned that uh, first game against Washington on the 31st when he scored 15 points 0 for 4 from beyond the arc in that contest. He'll take a seat as Jaron Ship comes in with 50.8 seconds left in this opening half and we get a 30 second timeout taken. Yeah, where Arizona State has to be ecstatic. Yeah. With a 35 34 score at the half. They did a good job of, of being able to survive the emotion that you knew was going to be in the building at the beginning of the game. The Huskies had that one early run, but staying within themselves, they just continued to play their game and got better on the defensive end with a little bit more effort, playing a little bit harder, and they just walked their way right back into this game. So they would have to be very pleased with uh, the score being what it is with 51 seconds left in the half. James Harden, the likely winner of Pac-10 Player of the Year, and that's saying some considering some of the outstanding performances turned in the conference in this season. Jordan Hill of Arizona, another guy that's likely to be a lottery pick in the NBA draft. Cal's Jerome Randall's been outstanding. We saw him against the Huskies down in Berkeley. And of course, Darren Collison down at UCLA. And Justin Denman, I think at one point, was, was a guy who was in the mix. And it may still be to some degree, but honestly, I think it's James Harden and everybody else. Yeah, he's cooled off a little bit, but I think you have to have John Brockman in that discussion That's also a good point. until the final two weekends are played. Uh, he might not be a leading candidate right now, but for this Washington team to be where it is right now, you have to give him some consideration. Arizona State on a 22 to 9 run over the last nine minutes as Brockman comes up short, and the Sun Devils with a chance to take the lead and take the final shot here in the half with 24 seconds on the clock. That was a great job by Brockman to not go for the, I'm sorry, by Pendergraft to not go for the pump fake, to hold his ground, to play big and make Brockman shoot over him. Good job defensively by Pendergraft. McMillan finds ship. Clock at seven. Inside to Pendergraft. Elevates. Nicely done. Couldn't get it to fall. Inside Abbott. Would have counted. Did it not go. And the Huskies will head to the locker room with the advantage. But as small as you could have. Isaiah Thomas doing what he can for his team. Glasser for his. And we're about where we thought we would be. Washington with just a one-point lead over Arizona State with first place in the Pac-10 on the line tonight in Seattle. 48-42, the Washington Huskies leading the Arizona State Sun Devils in a showdown for first place in the Pac-10 Conference here at Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Tom Glasgow, Francis Williams, Jen Mueller. With, what is up with the crew? What is going on in the truck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. They ought to be focusing on the game, and they're having nothing but Burger King BK burger shots. How are we even on the air? But take a look at John Brockman as we take a look at our BK Burger shots. Well, John Brockman is always doing his work, doing a great job of getting to the offensive glass as always, establishing low post position, and he's just so big and strong. He does his work early to, to establish that position, and once he gets it down there, you're not going to be able to move him, and he usually turns around, and it's two points. Senior out of Snohomish, Washington. You see the double double, the 56th of his career, 15 points and 10 rebounds. Talking about the action in the Pac 10 last week, where the Huskies got some huge help in addition to their win at USC. Brockman said, We were given a gift. Well, they need to protect that gift here tonight, and Arizona State. Wants to take it away and take over first place in the Pac-10, trailing the Huskies right now by six as James Harden tries to go to work on Holiday. And there's Jamel McMillan being harassed now by Holiday in the loose ball, and the Huskies come up with it. And numbers and a foul on McMillan. Yeah, Benoit Overton just put in relentless pressure on Jamil McMillan, making it difficult for him to handle the ball. He never got comfortable as he was trying to get ASU into their to their offense and that's what Overton does for Washington. He's the best probably the best on the ball defender maybe in the Pac-10. Third foul on Jamel McMillan. Pendergraf returns as Botang heads out. McMillan also checking out. Abbott, Glasser, Harden. The three guards on the court for Arizona State as Turner misfires. Brian ah! inside with a putback. That plus nine rebounding margin showing itself here as Washington always relentless on the glass. And contact inside. 
Vinoy Overton with the foul, his second personal, second team foul against the Huskies. You see Ab, Brian Ammoning go to work inside for Washington. Brian Ammoning with six points on three of four shooting. Lorenzo right. Romar loves the defensive effort by Justin Holliday harassing James Harden, and it creates the turnover and possession for the Huskies. Justin Holiday coming in and doing a great job defensively. And you see as we get deeper to this game, the Huskies' depth starts to kind of take its toll on Arizona State because Washington always just comes at you in waves. It is an area where Lorenzo Romar and his club feel they have an advantage. So far, so good. They lead ASU by eight. College basketball on FSN is brought to you by Quest. Get in the loop and join the community that's changing the way people connect. By Wendy's. Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers go straight from the grill to the bun to you. And by E-Trade Financial. Gorgeous shot of the Seattle skyline. The Washington Huskies leading the Arizona State Sun Devils 50 to 42. Nice to have you with us on FSN Northwest, FSN Arizona, and across the country on the FSN Regional Network. Arizona State 13 turnovers in this game. Washington with seven and points off turnovers, and this is maybe the biggest reason why Washington leads by eight, an 18 to two advantage over Arizona State. Ryan Ammoning with the miss. Holiday with the follow, and Arizona State with the ball. James Harden inside to find the Pendergraft. Making plays for him, setting up his teammates, allowing them to get open looks, get easy looks. Pendergraft, game high 19 points. Hoop six. Hoping lead his team the other direction as he forced the difficult pass. And Glasser with the finish, and the Sun Devils right back within four. Harden is leading the Pac-10 in scoring, and he's just behind Seth Tarver of Oregon State for being the leader in the conference in steals as well. There's only been four guys in the history of the Pac-10 who have led the league in scoring and steals. Gary Payton, Terrell Brandon, to name a couple, Don Collins, and Jason Terry. Pendergraft puts it in. Will it count? Again, Pendergraf Francis beating Matthew Bryan Ammoning down the court. A nice find. He went up for the shot, blocked by Bryan Ammoning. And Pendergraf will head to the line. Pendergraf's been doing a great job of running the floor all the entire game. Missed or made basket. He runs the floor, gets to the rim, establishes position, and uh, you know, makes himself available. So no basket on the putback. The foul called on the initial attempt. Pendergraf shooting two. And the Sun Devils done by three. Turner, Thomas, Brian Ammoning checking out for Washington. Both teams doing an effective job at the line. Washington with more opportunities and taking advantage of that. Pendergraf connecting on one out of two. Inside of 10 minutes in this second half in Seattle. Arizona State on a 5 nothing run right now. Over 10 to Justin Holliday and Con Dexter at the high post. Wide open look for Damon who has struggled from outside and continues to miss fire. Over 8 now from 3 for Dittman. Overton with the defense. And Harden, contact, no foul. Right back at it. Here goes Harden working the baseline. And contact with Vinoy Overton. Fiery emotion off the bench for Vinoy Overton. And that is huge. Foul number four on James Harden. Well, this is a great matchup. You have a, one of the best on the ball defenders in the league against one of the best one on one players in the league. Mono e Mono, as we talked about it earlier. That time Overton guessed right which way Harden was going to spin and beat him to the spot and drew the charge. And with that fourth foul, Harden takes a seat. Jamel McMillan returns for Arizona State. And let's see if the Huskies can get something going 
with the likely Pac-10 player of the year on the bench, Pendergraf, with the foul on Brockman. Fourth foul on Pendergraf and a nightmare scenario developing for Herb Sendek and the Sun Devils. Well, as quick as it was, Pendergraf had both hands in Brockman's back, and I think Brockman did a pretty good job of selling it a little bit by just stumbling a bit, and it brought attention to the fact that both hands were in his back, so now Pendergraf with four fouls. Four, along with his front court mate. So the Huskies will be shooting free throws for the rest of the game. And Brockman's in the bonus. Brockman unable to connect on the front end of that one and one, so the lead remains at three. Glasser, an open look, back rims it. Overton with the rebound and the push. Denman steps in and knocks it down, and maybe that will be the shot against Justin Denman on track here tonight. And you have to respect that shot fake that he gives you because he's been shooting so well from behind the three point line at almost 47%. Kick by Holiday. The Sun Devils will maintain possession. As you'll see Overton find Dittman. Shot fake. You have to respect it. One dribble, pull up. Just nice fundamental basketball play, and you have to respect it. Maybe a little better job of closing out by Glasser would have been more effective, but he bit on the shot fake, and it cost him. Francis mentioned that the Huskies are now in the bonus. ASU with 17 fouls, just three on the Huskies. Pendergraf with the four fouls, staying in the game. Kuczyk launching in and out. And so both teams continue to have a real struggle beyond the arc here tonight. And Denman with the look before he secured the catch. Two hands. Got to catch the ball with two hands. Lorenzo Romar getting in his player's face saying, hang in there, stick with it. We're going to need you down the stretch. Washington leading Arizona State by five. 7.57 left in regulation in this showdown matchup between Washington and Arizona State. Let's take a look at our U.S. Navy defenders of the game. And on defense, the Washington Huskies creating 14 Arizona State turnovers, leading Francis to 18 points for the Huskies. A huge statistic in this contest. Yeah, and in a five-point game, I mean, you can't afford to turn the basketball over at the clip. The Arizona State is turning it over here in the second half. As with 7.57 in the second half, they've turned the ball over eight times. And, uh, you know, Coach Sindek talked about that was something that they wanted to address about the turnovers, but it uh, hasn't played itself out here as they continue to turn it over at a more rapid pace than they did early. And with the four fouls, the rest is over for James Harden back in the contest. And obviously, Coach Sendek deciding now is the time we have to make our stand. Inside it goes to Pendergraft, also with four fouls. Guarded by Brockman, Ty Abbott. Gets the handle back. Kuczyk with the penetration. Hangs and hits. Nicely done by a guy who really makes his living beyond the beyond arc. The arc yep. But shows some nice ability right there. Well, he's a guy that in the offseason got his body together, lost about 15, 20 pounds, really got himself in shape, allowed him to be a lot more, a lot quicker, be more explosive, and uh, definitely helped his confidence. Offensive foul going against John Brockman. Let's take a look at Rehard Kusik's Kusik's sophomore out of Latvia. Nicely done. He was huge. He may have been the biggest player for Arizona State in their win last Sunday night over Arizona. Three threes late in the first half, and then two critical threes late in the ball game. Harden for three, and Brockman down on the floor and called for traveling. We're going back to Kutzix. Though he was five for ten for three in that game, and this move that we, we saw him make earlier is a move that he would not have been able to make. But you see the scramble for this loose basketball. You know who's going to be in the middle of it, John Brockman. But when he rolls, that is a travel. Well, Lorenzo Romar would tell you, or at least I think what he's telling the officials, whether he really believes it or not, <laughs> was that my man got rid of it quick enough. Oh yeah, you got to call. You got to lobby for your guy. Yeah, you hope you you, you, you hope you're getting get a get a call later as a result of your oh yeah dissension right now. As he continues to plead his case, 52-49 Washington, hanging on by three against an Arizona State team that came to town, meaning business. 
and meaning to get out of town with a half game lead in the Pac-10 conference. Holiday on Harden. And now the double team. Nice find inside to Gavin. The flush and by Pendergraft. And that's the risk you take. The Huskies decide to double team Harden on the pick and roll, but he's 6'5. And he can still see over the defense, and he's such a good ball handler. And I don't think that's something you can do with him, try to double team him. He's too good a ball handler, too good of a passer, and his vision is just too good. 22 points for Jeff Pendergraft. And this game, Francis, really being played when you look at that scoreboard at an ASU tempo. Turnover by Washington. Washington's had a run in the first half, a run in the second half. Arizona State continue to play within themselves, get the game back to their pace. And uh, with six minutes to go, we have a one-point game. The Sun Devils look to take the lead. Nice find by Kuchix. And Pendergraft with 24, and Arizona State with his first lead since 2 to nothing. And Kuczyk being very effective for putting the basketball on the floor, making some good passes, and that floater that he made earlier, two plays that last year he would not have been able to make. 30-second timeout taken by Lorenzo Romar, a fired-up Jeff Pendergraft. Herb Sendek told him prior to the Arizona game, focus over emotion. Right. You saw the Huskies try to double team Harden coming off the high pick and roll, but a nice job of him of making the pass that leads to the assist by Glasser. And then you see Kutzik put the ball on the floor, a little flip pass to Pendergraft, makes himself available, lays it up, gives ASU their first lead since 2-0. And I mentioned that focus over emotion prior to the Arizona game because I'm sure there was a like message here tonight coming into this hostile environment for the Arizona State Sun Devils. Well he used to be a very emotional player and they had to teach him how to harness that emotion turn it into passion so to speak but not get so emotional got get so caught up in the moment and he's done a great job of, of learning how to focus learning how to concentrate keeping his emotions in check and having another big game for Arizona State here tonight. Sun Devils on a 9 2 run over the last four minutes and 19 seconds. Denton was trying to find an angle to get it into Brockman. You see Brockman and Pendergraft going at it down on that, that low block. It's some hand-to-hand -hand combat. And the Huskies are totally out of sync right now on the offensive end. Last two trips resulting in turnovers for the Huskies. Bad pass that time by Holiday. I think and they can't. I'm sorry. Substitution is Gant comes in and Holiday heads out. Yes, I think the Huskies coming out of the timeout wanted to go to Brockman. And it's not a bad place to go with Pendergraft having the, the four fouls. But you don't have to force it in there. There's more than one way to, to enter the ball and supposed to get it to him to try to go at Pendergraft. And that man with the ball, James Harden, also with four fouls being guarded by Gant. Arizona State looking to build on its one point lead. Double team again off the hot pick and roll. And now that puts Washington in a scramble mode. And there's a wide open lift to Kuczyk. And he knocks it down. He does. A terrific job in terms of ball reversal right. by Arizona State. I'm not, I'm not double teaming him on that hot pick and roll. He's too good. Four point advantage for the Sun Devils at 56 52. And the Huskies offensively just don't seem. Real confident in terms of what they want to try to get done. Shot take again by Dentman. Steps into it. Let me get it to go. Follow tip by Pondexter just trying to keep it alive. Pendergraph with the rebound. And now you see the pace of the game absolutely at the tempo that Arizona State wants. Walking the ball up the floor, just getting into their half court offense, running their sets, and you know they're going to play to their strengths. And Mike Brock and Jeff Pendergraft with a double double, 24 points, 11 rebounds for the senior, who endured some very difficult times. Okay, no double team this time. Luke six on the floor again with the floater. And Pendergraft unable to time the jump to get to that ball. But no, no double team off the high pick and roll that time. They, they called it off. Two points for the Huskies over the last seven minutes and ten seconds. Inside the block and goes up strong and really not much that Pendergraft can do. So really the issue for Arizona State defensively, Pendergraft needs help in closing down those lanes. Yeah, and they're, and they're not going to double team Brockman. I mean, they need to stop penetration as best they can, but they're not going to double team him. He's not a guy that commands a double team. 
Washington within two and Herb Sendek wants to take a timeout. Three twenty five left to play. I don't think anybody surprised that we are at, at this point in an extremely competitive game and this is the time of game Francis where you look for the seniors you look for the stars a James Harden a Pendergraft and you see what they're playing for it has been a long long time since the Washington Huskies have won a conference title outright you got to go back to, to 1953, 1953. <laughs> but in terms of shared Pac-10 titles 84 and 85 Arizona State has never won a Pac-10 title since joining the conference with Arizona in 79 they won a West Coast Conference title back in 74 and 75 California you really got to turn it back 1959 1960 season and of course UCLA old news for the Bruins they are the three time Pac-10 defending champions the teams in contention for the Pac-10 regular season title this time around. Well if you're Washington you're at home you have the three remaining regular season games at home you got this big crowd backing you up and if you're Arizona State you got big game James. Arizona State has won four straight Pac-10 road games. They are used to the hostile environment and used to getting it done. No look inside by Glasser. Cook six again from the corner. Oh, and again, it. he hits. He's feeling it. He is a perfect example of not just making the shot, but when you make the shot. Thomas. Trying to answer offensive rebound Pondexter tries to force his way in and does and one. Huge play by Quincy Pondexter. Well they haven't been able to get the outside shots to fall as they're now one for 15 from behind the three point line but Kuk six tongue in there offensively get in the open spots he missed some shots early has not lost confidence and he's continued to shoot but you see Pondexter getting on the glass doing what Washington does to pull them within three. Terrific drama here at Bank of America Arena. Arizona State has come back and taken a three point lead over the Washington Huskies. Thanks in part to that man inside Jeff Pendergraft with a double double same for his counterpoint down in the paint John Brockman they love to get after each other and finding a home down in the paint Brockman feeding it out to Isaiah Thomas and then going to work inside Quincy Pine Dexter who will now try to complete a three point play and pull his team within two and is unable to do so as Ty Abbott gets the rebound for Arizona State 250 left to play here in Seattle. Games decided by five points or less the Sun Devils a perfect four and oh this season Washington a record of three and two and it certainly looks like we are headed in that direction. Arizona State very good road team six and two overall in the road Washington 14 and one at home as Harden goes to work again the ball movement Kuk six being guarded by Dem and Pendergraft fading over Brockman in and out rebound by Pondexter but going deep into the shot clock like that I'm sure that's what coach Sindek wanted and they got a good look just couldn't get it to fall 210 left to play in regulation. Washington winning the first meeting between these teams in Tempe by 13 points. Completely different type of game here tonight. Shot clock at 13 as Thomas finds a wide open Dentman for three. And finally, Justin Dentman in the clutch drains the triple and ties the game at 59. He was due to knock one down. But more importantly, he didn't lose confidence. He was 0 for 8 from three up until that point. Nice job to find him on the wing over there. He has the confidence to knock it down. Arizona State will take a timeout. That is such a huge play. Shooters must continue to shoot. And Justin Denman, a young man who has seen all kinds of adversity, especially in his sophomore and junior seasons. So I think, Francis, for him to step up and take this. Not really something that he's 
going to shy away from. No, he's been doing it all season long. He's had a great senior season. Similarly to Cook Six, got his body together. He came in the fall camp in great physical condition, dropped about 10 or 15 pounds. He was looking good. He knows that it's his senior year, and uh, he has really stepped up to the challenge of a lot of the criticism that he did receive after having such an outstanding freshman season. His sophomore and junior years were not very productive at all. And this senior year, though, he's, he's been great and been very consistent for Washington. Certainly one of the uh, great stories for Lorenzo Romar. And the officials are taking a second look to see if Denman was completely behind the three point line. Justin Denman did not score in the first half, eight points here in the second half. Harden shut out here in the second half so far for Arizona State. James Harden, so a reversal, 15 points in the first half as the officials continued to take a look. At what was originally called a three point shot and no doubt about it. I mean he is clearly behind that white line and I think that was the only angle the officials needed to see to make that call. So we are tied officially at 59 with 142 left to play. Arizona State basketball 25 seconds on the shot clock Thomas guarding Glasser. To Ty Abbott. As we come down the stretch, Washington with three timeouts left. Arizona State with one. And certainly Herb Sindek with total confidence in the man with the ball. Number 13, James Harden. No good. Pendergraft inside. Brockman inside. Battling in Pondexter. Comes up with a rebound for Washington. And Lorenzo Romar. Says now it's time for me to talk over an offensive possession with my players. 32nd timeout taken by the Huskies. What do you think he's going to want to do here? Now, Pendergraf with the four fouls. Will he ideally like to get it in, Francis, to John Brockman and let him take it to the hole? Well, I think at this point in the game, with a minute 13 remaining, it's not really about going after somebody that has four fouls. I think it's more about let's get into an offensive set. They seem that kind of have gotten their offensive rhythm back. They've got 30 seconds left on the on the shot clock. I think he just wanted to remind them because they've had some careless turnovers in a few possessions that kind of allowed Arizona State to get back into this deal. And just let's, let's go to our strengths. Denton's got it going again. Thomas is going to look for penetration. And as always, if there's a missed shot, you'll see four Huskies go to the glass. Take a look at our game recap. Arizona State connecting on just 41 percent of its shots. Washington even worse at 36 percent. You see the complete breakdown beyond the arc for both clubs here tonight. Both doing a much better job at the line. Washington taking advantage of nine more opportunities at the strike. 110 left in regulation tied at 59. Isaiah Thomas to Pond Dexter in the corner to Justin Denton. 15 seconds on the shot clock. As we go inside one minute here at Bank of America Arena. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Denton sizing up Glasser. Inside. Goes Glasser and knocks it down. New dub on a 7 0 run. And Derek Glasser on the ground for Arizona State. How about Justin Denman well, it's from beyond the arc and then in the paint. Well as wild and as awkward of a shot as that may have looked like that's the type of play that he's been exhibiting for Washington the entire season whenever they've needed a big shot whenever they needed a couple of big free throws to be knocked down Justin Denman has been their guy all season long and again this is just a an individual play he just creates a play for himself. And Glasser does a good job. I mean, defensively, he stays in front of him, funnels him to some help, and uh, he just makes an impossible shot. But again, getting the ball up off the glass gives it an opportunity to go in, and he kissed that thing in the right spot, and it dropped for him. Left shoulder of Denman into the stomach chest area of Glasser. Tough kid just a few weeks ago. He had a pick set on him. He did not see it coming, and really kind of a whiplash to the neck ended up with a concussion. And uh, came back nicely as we take a look at our Arby's Pac-10 standings. You see what is on the line here tonight. 
The University of Washington leading the way with a conference record of 11 and 4. Arizona State just one half game back. Cal, UCLA still in the mix. Terrific race in the Pac-10 this season. Yep, it really is. And apparently the officials are once again taking a look at this Justin Dentman play and I'm not sure what they are trying to figure out. No foul call on the play. The shot goes in. And it was off before the shot clock unless there was some malfunction with the shot clock maybe. Now they have completed their review. The scoreboard remains 61 to 59 in favor of the Washington Huskies with 45.9 seconds left to go. Arizona State has not scored in the last three minutes and 14 seconds. Washington on a 7 0 run in the last two minutes and 10 seconds with Justin Denman scoring the last five Washington points. As John Brockman encourages the crowd to make as much noise as possible here at Bank of America Arena. When Washington feels that they win this game. The Pac-10 title should be there for the taking. Arizona State has never won one. But we've got a lot of basketball left to be played even with it only being under 40 seconds to go. And the pressure right now on Justin Holliday defending. One of the top players in the nation and number 13 James Harden the shot clock at 14. Harden goes in on Brockman strong off the glass rebound by Dentman getting it done at both ends of the court and Harden with the steal goes in jams it and we're tied at 61 with 13.7 seconds left. He can affect the game in a lot of different ways. Here we go. Renzo Romar will not take the timeout. five seconds left. Denman with the ball. Stripped by Abbott. And we are going to overtime in Seattle. Not what the Huskies wanted and not really sure what Justin Denman was trying to get done there. Well James Harden with the with the good hands quick hands that's his third steal of the game. And as I mentioned earlier he has a chance to do something that only Gary Payton Terrell Brandon Jason Terry and Don Collins have done lead the league in scoring and in steals. We go to overtime. Well it should be no surprise that we get extra time here tonight going to overtime and if you're watching back east on this national broadcast you can't go to bed now with this kind of action Justin Denman inside with a huge play to put his team up by two but then Denman maybe just a little lackadaisical with the ball and James Harden with the big play the flush to tie things at 61. Well we said there was going to be a lot more basketball to be played in that 45 seconds and what a turn of events there Harden I think when he went in for the shot that he missed I think he was expecting some contact because he shot the ball very uncharacteristically hard off the backboard but man what what a what a way to just have the sense to D up and he saw an opportunity for the steal and he got it and he, he picked his pocket he picked him clean. See the overtime records for the teams this season Arizona State 2 and a Washington 0 and 1 and that was the triple overtime loss here against California. That's their one loss at home triple OT to Cal 88 85. Well it'll be interesting I think Francis to see how Justin Denman responds in this extra session. He made the big offensive plays the three pointer and then that tough shot you just saw in the paint but then the critical turnover and then a poor decision on that last offensive possession for the Huskies. So we'll see how he responds in this session. Arizona State with the first possession. Glasser with the ball guarded by Thomas. Keep in mind that both Harden and Pendergraft have four fouls. Harden inside fouled from behind as he penetrated. That is just the fifth team foul on Washington. Arizona State with eight. That may be a factor. Yeah, that, that's a definitely worse in Washington's favor as they are to continue to be aggressive and not put ASU at the line. Shot clock resetting to 35. Holiday guarding Harden. Tough assignment for the young man is Harden and Glasser were not on the same page that time. 
with their overtime a game tonight in the Pac-10, California defeating USC 81 to 78. Holiday. Denman feeding it inside Brockman. Ball goes out of bounds and it'll be Washington's ball to inbound with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Good job by Cook six to be in a help and recover position to get back and help Pendergraf on the post against Brockman. And the safety valve in to Thomas. Inside to Brockman again the four fouls on Pendergraf and Brockman goes to work. Pendergraf's pretty defenseless in that situation. All he can do is just try to play big. He went for the flop. Referees didn't go for it. Huskies with a two point lead. 63-61. Thomas with a defense on Derek Glasser. Abbott popping out. Feet inside to Pendergraf. Fading over Brockman. Loose ball. And Denton comes up with it for Washington. And the senior out of Carbondale, Illinois, pulling it out. 333 left in overtime. Ball deflected. Nice catch by Brockman. Goes up and lays it in. John Brockman with the first four points in overtime, and Washington with a four-point lead. Harden inside. Fouled and one for James Harden. And it's Denman on the deck. Well, you see Brockman establishing that low post position. And with the four fouls, Pendergraf cannot really defend him. All he can do is just try to stay behind him. And then you see Harden. He spins. Dentman guesses. And he doesn't get the, wasn't able to draw the charge. And he goes to the basket and has a chance for the three-point play. Foul called on John Brockman. His fourth. It looked like as Dentman went down from the contact with Harden, the back of his head hit Brockman's knee. Dentman all right. As Harden looks to complete the three-point play. Strong on the free throw and the rebound to Pondexter. Now John Brockman has four fouls as well, so that matchup down low gets even yeah. more interesting. Abbott with the defense on Isaiah Thomas. Washington looking like it is still trying to get the ball back into Brockman. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Six seconds. Denman going to work. Hanks. And possibly a delayed call on the foul. Delayed just a bit, but it will result in two free throws. And foul number five on James Harden ending his night here in Seattle. Well, that time you saw Denman put the basketball on the floor and just go aggressively. And Harden did a good job of staying in front of him, but Dittman drew the contact. Consequently, five fouls for Harden, and he is done for the night. James Harden checking out with 19 points, five rebounds, four assists. Remember, 15 of those points coming in the first half. Let's take a look at this play again as Dittman takes it into the paint. He'd have been in good shape if he hadn't reached. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't complain. He knew that he fouled him. But you're taught all the time, palms to the ceiling, just play big. But he comes down and, and goes for the block shot, and uh, that fouls him out. And Jamel McMillan replaces Harden in the Arizona State lineup. Justin Denman at the line this season, leading the team at nearly 85%. At his season high of 30 points in the first matchup between these teams in Tempe. It has been a struggle for Denman tonight, but he has made the huge offensive plays for the Huskies down the stretch in regulation. And that play you just saw with Brockman hitting the two quick baskets for Washington in this overtime period. And the Huskies up by four as Pendergraft tries to go to work on Brockman. Senior picks it back out, ball deflected and stolen by Detman off a deflection by Holiday. Cross court pass to Quincy Pondexter. 
And Lorenzo Romar telling his team, settle it down. Well, they work some clock and run the offense. They've gone deep into the shot clock the last two times, really trying hard to get the ball inside to either Dittman or Pondexter. I would expect them to do that again and maybe try to get that fifth foul on Pendergraft and get him out of the game, and then they'd be sitting in pretty good shape. But Arizona State does a good job defensively. Shot clock at five. Holiday with the open look. Strong, loose ball. And it's Isaiah Thomas coming up with a new shot clock for Washington. That's 14 offensive rebounds for Washington in the game. And the foul by Jamel McMillan against Washington's best free throw shooter. Huge rebound for the Huskies to get a second opportunity. And anytime you play zone, you have to have somebody on the weak side that's a tough rebounder. And you saw Kupcic over there. He's outnumbered. He's got Brockman. He's got Isaiah Thomas. They're all there. As always, Washington going to the offensive glass. You saw Kupcic get his hands on it, but he just wasn't able to control it. And then the Washington quickness tracks it down. Justin Denman, four for five now at the line tonight, giving the Huskies a five point lead. But remember, with a McMillan who can hit from beyond the arc, and especially a Kuksix who can make the big threes, this thing is far from over with 1.30 left to play. Glasser on the push, and wide open, Ty Abbott. Strong rebound by Pendergraft. McMillan with the penetration and the lay, and nicely done by Jamel McMillan to pull his team within three, making it a one possession game with 118 left. It's been everything that we hoped it would be the clash of powers in the Pac 10 for conference supremacy. Sixty eight sixty five Washington in front of Arizona State in overtime one eighteen left you see what's at stake as our Arby's Pac 10 standings point out the Huskies with a half game lead Washington has never won an outright Pac 10 title Arizona State has never even won a piece of the conference title since joining the league back in 1979 and Francis beyond that when you think in terms of seeding for the NCAA tournament this is a critical game in that regard as well. Well, two teams that missed the tournament last year both wanted to get in there, but it's little things that the Huskies are doing that here in the overtime period are getting them this lead. You see them picking up loose balls. You see them getting on the offensive glass, getting to the free throw line, and with a 118 to go here in the overtime period, they have a three-point cushion and possession of the ball. Well, you mentioned the uh, free throw line here tonight. Arizona State 9 of 13, Washington 20 of 25. 80% from the strike. And Washington being aggressive, they shot 158 more free throws this season than the team in the Pac-10 that's in second, which is Oregon. But just a one possession game as the Huskies lead 68-65. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Glasser with the defense on Dentman. Runner misfiring and Pendergraft with the rebound in Arizona State with a chance to pull within one or tie the game. And that was a great job by Glasser that time to make Dittman go to his left and not let him get comfortable to come back right, which he's been doing all night. Kuczyk could not come up with a clean catch to fire and gets the bounce on the penetration. It's a one-point game. Herb Sendik with the timeout with 28 seconds left to play. And on the perimeter right now, Kuczyk is the go-to guy. He's the one guy that can can either knock down a three or it's been great tonight to put in the basketball on the floor and get into the rim. But a nice job by McMillan to get some penetration. Now the Huskies have to come close out. Kuksix puts the ball on the floor, gets to the middle, and gets the friendly roll. Kuksix with 13 points. And Arizona State probably felt like maybe he got fouled down low as he was able to play through it and power up and get the ball up to the basket. But again, another big basket by Kuksix who for two weekends in a row has come up big in the clutch for Arizona State. Let's talk strategy for Herb Sendek with his team down 68 67 28 seconds left to play the immediate foul you take five seven seconds see if you can get a steal what do you think his approach is going to be I would go with B I don't think you have to foul right away uh, apply some full court pressure see if you can create a turnover if you're not able to create a turnover see if you can get the ball into the hands of one of the lesser foul shooters and if and if the ball ends up in one of their hands then foul. 
and just in terms of numbers coming into this game that would be John Brockman but John has been very effective at the line tonight five of six and obviously Lorenzo Romar you would think is going to want that inbounds pass to go first and foremost to Justin Dentman who leads the team in free throw shooting at nearly eighty five percent and tonight at the line four for six. You see Vinoy Overton coming into the game he's a he's a good ball handler the three guard attack that Washington sometimes like to use they'll use him to trigger the ball inbounds. And uh, the guys on the floor right now are all pretty good free throw shooters except for Brock. And the ball does come in to Denman guarded by Abbott and the foul will go against Ty Abbott. So just about three seconds taken off the clock as Justin Denman will head to the line to shoot two. Double bonus situation for Washington as you see the free throw numbers from tonight an 11 point advantage at the line for the Huskies. Washington by two. And keep in mind, even if Denton makes this, it is still a one possession game with some dangerous three point shooters on the court for Arizona State. Well, this is a big free throw here to get it to at least three. And he does. Holiday returning for Washington as Brockman goes out. All right, the question are we close enough to talk about? Do you take the foul, put Arizona State at the line, or do you play straight up defense and risk the three? That's never been Lorenzo Romar's uh, strategy. Glasser, too strong, comes up with a loose ball and a foul against Arizona State. I believe it's against Pendergraft. If it is, his night ends. It is foul number five on Pendergraft. And he leaves with 24 points, 13 rebounds, and an assist. Well, Glass Glasser got a great look. First of all, he got a great look. Good job by Abbott to find him. And he's got a great look of the three that he can step into. Wasn't able to knock it down. You see there's a loose ball there, but uh, apparently behind the scenes there, there was a push by Pendergraft, which will put Washington at the line. And uh, Pendergraft's night is through for the night, but a big effort by him, 24 points, 13 boards. Obviously some type of defensive breakdown for Washington. As you look at the two stars for Arizona State, both fouling out tonight, Ian Harden and Pendergraft. Justin Demon has scored the Huskies' last five points and ten of their last 14 as Overton makes it a two possession game with that free throw. Benoit Overton with five points all at the line, make it six. Six for six from the strike for Benoit Overton. Abbott goes the other way quickly, inside rejected by Detman. Arizona State will inbound with 15.2 seconds left down by five. Kuksix over Thomas. McMillan chasing it down last touch by Washington Arizona State ball 9.5 seconds left. Well no post players on the floor for either team Arizona State five shooters on the court. Washington State Washington I'm sorry counters with their best quickest defensive unit. Coop six into McMillan to Glasser A double pump banking three pointer with four point two left the ball into Detman and he's fouled quickly by Coop six with two point eight seconds left in a two point game seventy two to seventy how about that by Derek Glasser. Well, it's he gets a wide open look at a three earlier wasn't able to convert it and now he hits a double pump leaner from behind the line the line, the line and bakes it in. And Justin Denman can basically seal this with two made free throws. Three point advantage for Washington. Seventy three seventy. Uh oh 
Strong rebound by Abbott. Launching from three quarters court, and the Washington Huskies have defeated Arizona State.